people mention the fire bombing with Dresden because it says the most criminal and vicious act. A day was chosen, a city was chosen which has no defense because that city is a commercial and academic city. It doesn't have any factories or anything. So there was barely any air defense there. Most of the defense was concentrated in, in, in Bayern, in Nuremberg, and uh, Mannheim, and, uh, and uh, Schweinfurt. Schweinfurt had the, the most important uh, roller, roller bearing fabric, the most important one, and this is essential. It has such a protection that until the end of the war, nobody dared going there and bombing. There, they were not attacked. That should be a worthy of attack because it had military and strategic importance. That city is, what is the city? It's a commercial city and academic city. And also, before the time of bombing, the, the, uh, the German army was collapsing in the east and the, the, the people of German origin were running away from, from Poland and from the far east towards the mainland Germany. And there were, they were hundreds of thousands, possibly millions of refugees living in Dresden and around. So the city was full of refugees. Inside the city and outside. But they were outside also because the city could not accommodate all of them. Many of them were living in the cellar, under the ground and so on, because that's the place where they usually uh, store coal and, and, and potatoes and so on. But they use it as housing. So it was an ideal target to kill as many people as possible. And then, then with a thousand planes, she was in a day which they knew there was no rain and the wind was strong. And then the bombing was mostly done not with explosive, with incendiary bombs. So that when a, fire, a massive fire starts with a wind, the whole city will be engulfed in a, in, a, in, a, in a firestorm, killing hundreds of thousands, possibly millions of people. Nobody knows the number. The minimum estimates 250,000, but most likely it's more than a million. Because all cellars were full. I, 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 I studied in Germany in the 60s, one who who, uh, who, whose, whose father uh, was in the outskirts of Dresden and came after the fire was extinguished by itself, extinguished by, nobody can extinguish, died by itself and shook the city to see what's going on. He said in some cellars, there was almost a, a foot high of blood and human fat from the burned bodies because the, the buildings were full of human beings and the streets were some people were living in the streets because the city was crowded with refugees and they were all burned and obviously their fat and their blood flew down into the cellars. In some places, it was almost one foot deep of fat and human blood. That's the fire bombing of the rest. Okay, and, and that fire bombing of Germany attacks was not a retaliation for Germany. It's Hitler who retaliated. And this is, has been verified in some writings about Churchill. The initial attacks of Hitler were against industrial facilities, which is limited in war because they're producing weapons and so on in Coventry and so on. Then the, the British started attacking the cities and civilians and annihilating them. And then later, then the Germans retaliated by attacking London and so on. Not, not, they didn't initiate. It's Churchill, the British, I mean, the British leadership, not the British people. They, they started this annihilation. So they're all cousins, all Christian cousins, from the same tribe, or Supreme tribe, Germanic tribes. These people are brutal. 